History in Haiti has not been very kind. It's been a country that has been devastated through natural disasters, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and the like. It's a country that's been devastated by erosion. It's a country that's been devastated by corrupt governments and abusive governments. You know, they lost 300,000 people in this earthquake. Most of their government is gone. All of their social systems and economic and political systems have been decapitated. Here's an entire country with no social safety net. In fact, if you don't go out and make a living for yourself, it's not going to happen. You're going to starve. And so you've got an entire country of people who are ambitious, who want to work hard, who are looking for opportunities, who want to make a, make a difference for themselves and their families to improve their lives. And uh, that's really attractive. Haitians are exceptional people. It's an exceptional country. They get up every morning, you know, they're rebuilding their country. They freed themselves from slavery. They can do anything. Walking the streets of Port-au-Prince, I still picked that. I picked it up. They need help, but I believe they can turn it around. If you zoom out and look at Haiti as a whole, I think the challenge in Haiti is to bring them from misery to poverty. Baudouris, in the rural area, entirely different. But there's not misery in, in Baudouris. There is poverty. Well, when you go to Baudouris, there's really not a lot when you're there. There's no downtown. There's no area that you would say, OK, this is the center of Baudouris. We estimate that there's probably about 10,000 people that live in the area, but you wouldn't know it. You know, Baudouris was wiped out by a flood. 3,000 people died in this part of the country. There was a little school there, and it was gone. Lulu, our friend Lulu, got on a motorcycle and drove up to Baudouris, and he reopened the school. They poured that concrete slab, and they put those two-by-fours up. They're driving this, you know, not us. The challenge in Baudouris, and where Haitian support, I think, can really help people on the ground, is to go from poverty up to uh, uh, social and economic sustainability. Again, we're not talking this, you know, we're just, we're just talking here. Now, how do we get from poverty to social and economic sustainability? Uh, I have no idea, organically, it hasn't come from me, what, what, what our friends in Baudouris are telling us in Creole and French and, and some English, is education. That was a very moving meeting for me, uh, the, the, the night that we landed. So let me translate for that. Okay, go ahead. Going down to Haiti, I just tried to listen. When uh, we were flying home from Haiti, I summarized what they were telling me. Education is the way that you build a society. Education is the way that you develop economic sustainability. And education is the way that you build democracy. It's when I went to Baudouri and listened to everyone down there that I realized what the underpinning, what the foundation of democracy is, and it's education. I never knew that. You take it for granted here. Down there, you don't. We believe that the, the true rebuilding takes place in the education. By educating the, today's children, then you can secure their future tomorrow and have a better country. Well, the facility right now is effectively an open room school with a metal roof and posts and a cement slab. Look at the physical plant of the school. Look at the, the long walks the kids have to take to school.
And it's just amazing as you see these kids come into the school early in the morning and, and they march into their class. And you see them all just jam-packed in these benches. And they're literally sitting on top of each other because there's just not a lot of room. We have no food program in the school, um, so they're hungry. We have to have a short education day. It's over at 1.30 every day. Why? Because we have no food to keep them in, you know? It's the simple things that keep kids in school. It's making sure that the kids have the shoes, a uniform, school supplies. And our biggest challenge for the school is keeping kids in school, not because they don't want to be there, it's just because they have other obligations and responsibilities, usually around their family. We're excited about raising the quality of education for the kids in Votary through a new school. The initial cost of building an entirely new school is $115,000, a school that will house the 574 students. itself will be very strong. It will be earthquake resistant up to I believe a seven or eight magnitude earthquake. A category four hurricane it will also be a shelter for the community as well in times of distress. We build them a real school with real desks, real blackboards. You know you think about a blackboard it's a small thing that we really, really need. Right now, they're, they're drawing on planks of wood and then sanding them down, you know? The real value of Ford Bordery with this new structure will be not only a new school, but it'll also be a new vocational school, a new community center, so that adults can also come and they can also learn a new job skill, better techniques at farming, how to service the community and things like that, about erosion, how to dig wells, masonry, carpentry. Once we start educating people in the area, you'll see the local economy is starting to pick up, and that's what's really exciting. It's not just educating kids, but just seeing an entire community grow and become more affluent. And that's probably the biggest thing we can do to impact lives in Haiti, is to give them education leading to a job. When we lock down this school, when we have this school on track to deliver a credible education system, then we'll move on to the next school. What they're telling me is they do not want the Haiti of 20 years from now to be the Haiti of the last 100. And the way that we can move beyond that is to build these schools 
to, to give them the resources to run these schools, to become active citizens in a democratic process. That's how you ensure that Haiti in 20 years will not be, maybe it's 50 years, whatever, I don't know, won't be the poorest spot, the most desolate spot in the Western Hemisphere. So that's our goal, that's our strategy, is to build schools and then find people who are willing to take ownership of them for a five-year period, and then we'll just keep moving on and on and on. You know, it changed my life. And I tell people, come to Haiti with me for 48 hours, uh, and, and it'll change your life. They go, well, my life is fine. I don't, I don't need to change it. I said, well, you think that now, because, but come with me, and your life will get larger. Come with me, see the kids, meet the kids meet the people on the ground, meet the quality of the commitment of the people that we have on the ground.